You guys, I just want you to understand how insanely realistic and highly detailed Mid Journey version 5 is. It is just truly remarkable. In this video, I'm going to show you some really cool prompting hacks and a little bit on some very specific parameters you need to know to create amazing images. So instead of giving you guys a long, lengthy intro, we're just going to jump right into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get really good prompts, if you're new to Mid Journey, that is, is come up here specifically to midjourney.com slash app slash feed. Now you will have to log in. And fortunately, a membership is free. And if you want to pay, you can. We'll get into that a little later. Now what you guys are seeing here is some of the top community feeds for version five. At least I'm going to assume the majority of these are version five since that is the new latest and greatest. And as you can see here, these prompts are absolutely stunning. The realism is off the charts. Now, one of the first hacks, I guess, if you want to call it that, I'm going to show you to getting some of these amazing prompts is to simply just start with some of these prompts that are already available to you. So as we scroll down a little more, like here would be a perfect example. It does portraits and realism exceptionally well. So let's do something like this. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down here and you want to triple click. And this way it will highlight everything and you'll just control C to copy. Now, as you can see here in the mid journey bot and your direct messages, I could literally just paste that exact prompt because when you select that whole prompt we just did, it can actually copy the entire thing. So you would just paste it here and it will actually generate an image that is very close to what you saw. Now, this is extremely helpful for a multitude of reasons, primarily because it gives you a great starting point and you already pretty much know what the result is going to be. I know people have already been doing this, but not a lot of people know to get prompts from the community page. Now, this is just me directly copying and pasting. So what I would like to do is I'd like to make some variations. So we'll do slash imagine. We'll paste in the prompt and maybe instead of landscape oil painting, we'll do landscape photography. I also don't want an autumn in space. Let's do, we'll do comma and I'm going to type in birds and wildlife just to see what happens. And also I want it to be 16 by nine, which we'll cover these in just a second and boom done. Would you guys look at that? Look how beautiful these are. And this is just from again, using this as a starter prompt and making slight tweaks and variations to that to get a result that's more directed or aimed at what you're looking for. Now, the point isn't to copy and paste someone else's prompts. The point is to use those as starting points. So that way you already know that the result of what you're looking for is pretty good. Now, keep in mind that the community page here is just one place in which you can get amazing prompts from. I think it's personally my favorite. And the reason for that being, and keep in mind, you have to be signed in for this because if you're not signed in, uh, I don't think the app will show you these, but if you set it on hot, these will tell you the most voted on or the most liked. So that kind of uh, organizes the quality there for you. So you can see which ones are really popular right now. And let's say you're looking for something really specific. Let's say you're wanting a specific kind of portrait photography. So I can type that in here. And so the first thing you're going to see is a lot of version four prompts because it's under similarity. And if you look three months ago, four months ago, four months ago, so this is back in with version four. So you want to go over here to advanced and then you want to make sure that it's on hot or new, preferably new since V5 is clearly new. And would you look at this? Some of these just look absolutely amazing. Now we'll do the same thing again. I personally love this one and we'll also let you know here a V5 upscale. So as we click into this, we could just scroll down here and we could just copy the whole prompt. Now remember, this will only pop up if you are signed in to the Mid Journey website via Discord. And this will also tell you some more information of additional parameters used on the original image, which I also wanted to mention something real quick. So currently, as of late March of 2023, V5 does not have an upscaler. It's all upscaled by default. So this just means that somebody selected the image to upscale and it gave them the default image that was generated in the group of four, since it already generates an upscaled image for you. Now let's go take this and put this in a mid journey and make some variations. All right. So I just pasted the prompt in slash imagine. Now I like a lot of what's going on here, but I'm going to change Gandalf to maybe something more humorous. Like, I don't know, Alex Jones. Let's change this to just deep woods. Maybe instead of long white hair, he has long flowing hair. Now I know I'm just making very subtle adjustments here, but I'm really curious to see what it's going to do with this. 
And the results are in. Um, the images look fantastic. While it's not exactly Alex Jones with long flowing hair, these images generated are exceptional. So again, guys, this is just one way in which you can prompt farm. Now, another great place to prompt farm is within the actual Mid Journey Discord itself. So currently under showcase, you have quite a few you can pick from. V5 showcase uh, is really nice where you can see a lot of results that people have gotten specifically with a V5. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of prompt sharing within this particular group, but it does show you some amazing results you can get. However, if we come down to themed image gen, there is just tons of prompts. So for example, if I go here to image prompts, it's literally just people generating images and you can kind of look at their prompts and see what images they're getting. Or maybe you could take those prompts as ideas and make your own generations. So to make it really simple, guys, in my opinion, the best two places to prompt farm are within the actual Discord under image prompts or multi prompts really any of these are going to have a lot of this going on that you can kind of hunt and look for and of course the mid journey community feed this is probably going to be the best place for you now since this is a tutorial i do want to show you a few things here and there but i'm not going to go over every little detail in fact i think mid journey has exceptionally well done documentation so if you go to midjourney.com home and right down here there's the get started button and there are just so many things in here that you could really kind of dive into and learn about different parameters and versions and all that such. Now, in my opinion, you don't need to know everything, but I will show you a few different things that can really help you create amazing images. So the first is obviously what we've been doing where we prompt farm, and that's a great way in which you can kind of learn what effects do what and what parameters can give you what results. But in addition to that, I think that there are a few parameters that you should definitely know and really experiment and play around with. And that's something I wanted to touch upon in this part of the video. And so the first parameter, which I think is one of the most important is of course, setting an aspect ratio. And that my friends is denoted like this. So it's aspect ratio, and then you could punch in whatever you want. So I love 16 by nine. I feel like that is probably one of the best results, but you can do pretty extreme things in version five. So not only could you also do the vertical format of 916, but you can do crazy things like 520 or something that doesn't even make a whole lot of sense and just have it be as whack and wild as you want. But that is the joy of mid journey version five. Now by default, it's going to do one by one or 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. So if that's just the standard of what you want, then you actually don't need the aspect ratio parameter on there. So again, let's see this prompt in action. Let's do portrait of a beautiful woman in red standing in New York City. I should also make this photography, comma, full body shot. Now we'll just use this prompt over and over again for the next few parameter examples so you can see how those things affect the overall results. Okay, then similar to Python, we write this dash dash AR for aspect ratio. And like I said, I'm gonna do 16 by nine. Now again, remember that by default, it does this. Okay, so I'm just now realizing I actually flubbed the word portrait, but what's amazing about Mid Journey is that it actually understood that I meant portrait and not portrait. So excuse the typo there, but it still actually is producing a beautiful work of art here. So the fact that the AI can actually understand typos is actually impressive. And there we go, folks. That is quite amazing, to be honest, extremely detailed. It looks fantastic. Now, this is just kind of the bare bones basics. So let's start adding some other parameters that I like to use to kind of change things up a little. Okay, so we're gonna go back, we're gonna do slash imagine, we're gonna paste in the exact same prompt. Actually, let's get rid of that. Okay, so instead of doing the aspect ratio parameter, let's do the chaos parameter. Now the chaos is denoted by the same two dashes followed by a C. Now with the chaos parameter, you can set the number and don't quote me on this, but I believe anywhere between zero to 100. And it kind of controls what the outcome is going to look like in a very specific way. So if you have it at zero, which I believe is the default, or maybe it's 50, you get a pretty standard portrait photography based on what I asked. But if you set the parameter to 100, which is the max, you might get some really interesting camera angles, just things that are really unconventional, but still giving you what you're asked for. Let's, let's see the example. And it's done. So as you guys can see, putting the chaos all the way up to 100 definitely gives you a a lot while the results not only do we have the typical square aspect ratio because we do not have the 16 by 9 anymore but the images 
almost seem more realistic. But ultimately, I think what the chaos parameter does, in my opinion, from what I've seen, is it makes the results a lot less predictable, like this, for example, or this, for example. Now, this is probably the closest to just having without the chaos parameter on it. But even then, the guys, I highly recommend that you play with the chaos parameter because it is personally one of my favorites, just because it spits out results that aren't what you would typically expect. Now, this is just one example. And in this video, I'm not going to go in every single example with that parameter, but just play around with it and see the results you can get out of it. It's a lot of fun. And last but not least, everyone is multi-prompting. Now, multi-prompting is technically more advanced, but it's pretty easy to learn. And it's honestly one of my favorite things to do with prompting because of how specific you could really tell the AI to interpret your prompt. Now, in short, it is possible to have Midjourney Bot consider two or more separate concepts individually using colon colon as a separator. Now, basically separating prompts allows you to assign relative importance to parts of a prompt. So right here's a perfect example, right? If you just type in hot dog, the AI will interpret that as an actual hot dog. But if you do hot colon colon dog, Dog, now it's going to understand that dog and hot are two different things. So even though this one is kind of looking a little more ethereal and spacey or spiritual looking, it kind of almost makes me think like there's like steam coming off the dog or something, or that it's like a dog that's actually hot. So here's another really good example of multi-prompting. So here, if you just tell it to do a cupcake illustration, it will give you an illustration of an actual cupcake. But what if you want a cup that has a cake in it to actually be illustrated? Well, there's that. Or what if you want the word cup, cake, and illustration to all be looked at as separate things? And it even tells you here that when it looks at these things separately, it will perform and behave separately. Now, a lot of ways we can use multi-prompting and our favor is by adding prompt weights. Now, by default, if you just do something like this, where it's like hot dog, it will automatically place the weight to each of these as one to one. So something to know about prompt weights is that when you add a double colon and you separate the prompt into different parts, Parts, you can actually add a number immediately after the double colon to assign the relative importance to that part of the prompt. So for example, let's look back at the hot dog prompt, right? So they're of equal importance, the word hot and dog. But what if we assign hot to two and dog will just default to one? So what this means is that when the AI interprets the text into an image, it understands that hot takes much more importance than dog. So it's definitely going to flavor the image this way. And this is actually the best way to explain it. Hot and dog are considered as separate thoughts, whereas hot is twice as important as dog. And look at that. We're getting a dog that's actually hot by being on fire. And of course, here's some more amazing ways that you can explain this in simpler terms. And of course, then there is such thing as negative prompt weights. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into all of these things. This is all here for you in the documentation to really get into. I just wanted to cover some really basic basic concepts in this video just to kind of get you and ease you into mid journey. But one of the things I really enjoy about multi prompting is the fact that you can tell it to exclude specific things. So like this, for example, a vibrant tulip fields. But what if you want vibrant tulip fields, but you don't want any red at all. And so that, of course, is where the no parameter comes in or just the negative as it's showing right here. And so because of this, when the AI goes to take the text and generate it, it's going to know to not include that color in your results or whatever detail it is. So coming back here to our prompt we've been playing with, let's actually do some multi-prompting with it and see what we can get. All right, so using multi-prompting, I took this prompt and I did portrait photography of a beautiful woman in red too, which is going to have the most weight and importance standing in New York City. And I actually did 0.5 because I really want to take the city aspect of this prompt and make it very minimal. Obviously the full body shot. Now I actually added the negative exclusion prompt here, or excuse me, parameter at the end with dash dash no. And what I'm telling it is I don't want any sky in this image produced. So we're gonna see what it looks like. And there you go, guys. This is why I love, love, love multi-prompting is because now our end result looks dramatically different than the first two that we gave it, all because we told it how to interpret our prompt. And that's basically all multi-prompting really is, is you're just explaining to the AI, hey, I want this section of the prompt to have a lot more importance than this section. And of course, using the exclusion that you don't want specific things. And of course, you know, there is technically still a little bit of sky in here, but you can tell that she is in an urban environment and it still looks really good. And of course, if I wanted to, if I wanted this in 
and 69. I could have added that here to the end, but this is just meant to be a very basic beginner friendly way into getting into using chaos and getting into using multi prompting. And so again, if any of these details we talked about today are a little confusing or maybe hard to grasp, just simply go over to the mid journey docs section and they explain all this very thoroughly, very easy to understand. And by the way, guys, we only cover like maybe three things out of all the commands and parameters. There is so many things like quality and seeds and stylized. And so I didn't want to overwhelm you guys, but I might do a video where we do a very thorough in-depth going over each and every one. But this is meant to be very beginner friendly. I encourage you guys to go and explore and play with all these other parameters on your own just to see what kind of images you guys can generate. And of course, lastly, I wanted to cover the question that a lot of you are probably asking, well, is MidJourney free? How can I use it? Well, it is free, kind of. So how it works is you actually get on Discord and you join their Discord group. Once you're in, you can actually go to these groups down here under general image gen. And here you can just go ahead and punch in prompts and just generate your images that way. I do think your bandwidth is limited and to how many you could produce per hour is also limited, but I'm not exactly sure on those numbers. However, the basic plan here is actually 10 bucks a month and you actually get access to much faster GPU. But in my opinion, the best part about being subscribed is that instead of having to produce your images here in these image generating threads where you're competing for space and having other people's artwork pop up over yours as you're waiting for yours to get done, you can actually just DM the mid journey bot itself. And here's where you can do all your image prompting. Now, I don't think you can do this on a free trial version. I think you have to have the paid plan to do this, but guys, it is so worth it. And of course, lastly, if you want to look back at all of your oldest work or however that is, you can just go to midjourney.com and under your own personal page, it tells you how many jobs you've done in the past. And here you have a collection of all the work you've ever done or produced, including the prompts to these exact same images. And so this is really nice if you ever want to revisit your own work. And that's going to do it for today video, you guys. I hope this has been extremely helpful if you're a beginner and you're really wanting to dive into mid-journey, but maybe you're really intimidated because it seems extremely overwhelming and there's a lot of things to look into. So I encourage you to take your time, experiment, play around with different parameters, generate a ton of different images because that's how you're going to get really good at mid-journey. And not just mid-journey. Right now, it seems like the majority of all text-to-image generators use the same kind of prompting system. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button for more content just like this on all things AI tutorials and the future tech.